Good morning. Uh, actually, I have presented this new method in 2014 at American Academy of Ophthalmology. Here, I want to present the method and the long-term results. What's chronic ocular hypotonia? Uh, is persistent hypotonia if that's uh, equal or less than six millimeters mercury, and it's, it must be lasting uh, more than one month despite all medical uh, therapies, because medical therapies focus on suppressing ocular inflammation, and we know that inflammation may cause hyposecretion of humor aqueous. Sorry. Why is it so important, this cranicocular hypotonia? We know it may have many complications. It may cause corneal edema, cataract, maculopathy, papillary edema, visual loss, PVR, and ocular pain, and eventually many eyes may be lost. And uh, have, if you have a quick look at the uh, current therapies on cranicocular hypotonia, we still use anti-inflammatory and cycloplegic drops uh, and another drop we have, but we don't have at hand, 2% ibopamine drops. And in the literature it says it may uh, help in half of the patients. And the IP may be uh, high, IP rise may be 2 millimeters or so. And uh, of course we have to focus on uh, the cause of the hypotony. If there is overfiltration, we have to block. If there is a ciliar body detachment or dialysis, we have to surgically repair it. If there are epithelial membranes, we have to remove them surgically. But uh, if we do everything and there is still hypotony, and we have to carefully inspect the ciliar body epithelium and ciliar body in most of the eyes. In such situations, we see a ciliar body atrophy. And in this condition, we have a very limited uh, management. So. Uh, we can give viscoelastic solutions into the anterior chamber on the vitreous cavity as a temporary, uh, uh, a temporary action, or we can give gas or silicon oil into the vitreous cavity, and so on. Uh, this, our sur new surgical method, focuses on uh, blocking iridocorneal angle at least partially and decrease aqueous humor outflow through the iridocorneal angle. And a capsular tension ring, a normal capsular tension ring is placed to the iridocorneal angle. And the capsular tension ring size must be at least 11, 13 millimeters or greater than this. The greater the CTR, the better the results. And I want to show the technique. It must start automatically, but here. You may create a very little corneal incision and you can uh, simply insert the corneal, uh, capsular tension ring to the iridocorneal angle. Uh, you can use only BSS while doing this procedure or this another video. Uh, you, you may create, you may give viscoelastic also during this uh, procedure or you can use BSS. There's a very tricky point in, in this uh, situation. If you give viscoelastic into the inter anterior chamber during the procedure, you will see the maximum uh, IOP rise effect. And by the time uh, when the viscoelastic material is absorbed, you will see the effect of capsular tension ring only. Here, you will see, you see the uh, possible operator picture of the capsular tension ring that's nicely located at the angle, pressing the angle. Here is our results. It's a retrospective case series, and it includes 13 eyes of 13 patients. Uh, 12 of the patients had uh, previous multiple retinal detachment surgeries and had that of 360 uh, PRP burns. That's why uh, they uh, have hypotony. Uh, one, I had a previous trabeculotomy surgery and had a severe hypotony. And minimum uh, follow-up period was 12 months. It was ranging from 12 months up, up to 27 months. Sorry. Uh, to see the results, uh, we divided them into three groups. In the first group, 
there was no silicon oil in the uh, eye. In the second and thir third groups, there was silicon oil. And in the second group, silicon oil was kept because they were also uh, severe hypotonic. In the third group, uh, the silicon oil was removed, and we show we see that uh, the eyes were severely hypotonic and give silicon oil back. So. Uh, when we insert the capsular tension ring in both three groups, we have uh, different amounts of IOP rise, but IOP rise change was ranging from three to eight. When we compare the IOP changes and the visual equity changes uh, in all 13 patients, the mean Intraocular pressure was 4.6, and the final IOP pressure was 9.5, and the change in the IOP rise was statically significant, uh, and the visual equity changes, logmar visual equity changes, were also statically, statistically significant in this series. Uh, we see no ocular complication during the follow-up due to CTR implantation, uh, and we see statistically significant, significant IOP rise, and uh, a significant increase in visual acuity. As a conclusion, uh, this method may be another treatment option of chronic ocular hypotony. It may work, especially in eyes those have some amount of humor acute secretion. The more secretion is the more effective, as you see. Thank you very much.